Okay, good morning YouTube, uh, friends, family, and freaks. And as you know, I associate myself with the latter here on YouTube. Um, I want to take a moment to do a quick update, uh, but I want to talk about a couple things real quick that I have uh, discovered recently. Um, it's been going around, so if you don't know, I'm going to add to the to the pitch here. There are a couple events uh, that are going to take place this summer that you should make yourself aware of. Um, the first is happening within just a few days here in June. Uh, it's a uh, Northcom event. Um, it's a regional event. Um, so it's going to happen between the 18th and the 27th of June. So I think you should plan your traveling or whatever... Uh, Accordingly, um, you wouldn't want to be caught in some sort of roadblock or something like that make you late to work. So uh, there may be some minor displacement of your time um, because of these, uh, because of this particular event. Uh, the other is um, is a nationwide event. Uh, it's by FEMA, a terrorist event uh, thing, and it's going to happen uh, training exercise. And it's going to happen in the later part, latter part of uh, July, the end of July. So um, just make yourself aware of those operations, uh, where they're going to go down, what they entail, and how they may or may not affect you and your family personally. So there you go. Okay, let's move on from that. And there's my little flower, which is weird. Um, let's uh, take a look at this. It's very skinny. And I transplanted it from the sick plant, uh, from the sick tank, and because, you know, it was behind. And I put it down here once I removed the uh, collards. And within two or three days, it sprouted a bloom. What's weird is, and I believe it's life trying to live, the other plants um, have not bloomed. Uh, even in the sick tank, where you'd think that they might. So they are obviously too sick to bloom a flower over there to continue their lifespan or their lineage. Um, and these are too healthy to sprout a flower because they're still growing tall. Okay, let's see what I want to talk about besides that stuff. Okay, I want to touch on inorganic material. Um, or organic material that cannot be broken down by the nitrifying bacteria because it's actually food and roots and whatever else. So let's talk about a couple of microbial processes. This is simply uneaten food. I've discovered that the fish are virulent, or in their virulence, or whatever you want to call it, I don't say, full of spit and vinegar. Uh, they got lead in their pencil. They're mean as hell. They're just striking the food. I feed by hand. I throw one food, one handful at a time, and I stop feeding when they stop eating. Well, hence I've learned that they were full ten minutes ago, right? And they're just mean and striking at the food just to be striking at the food. They chew it up and then obviously spit it out. So I'm feeding too much. And what's happening is the the nitrifying bacteria doesn't break this down. So we need to add other bacteria. And in that regard, there are a couple microprocesses um, that um, you can end up purchasing. Now, I'm sure you can grow this, but I do not know how to maintain it. Uh, once you get a culture going, you would, could buy a quarter, a quarter gallon of it or uh, whatever and um, brew it with a bubbler and whatever it needs to feed on, which I would assume some sort of food, but um, I don't know how to culture it. So you could actually grow it from a quarter, uh, from a quart, uh, to, uh, uh, to, you know, 55 gallons, whatever you might need. It, it, at any rate, it's a live bacterial process that you can use. Uh, I was sure it's got some sort of amino acids that are in or around the humic family and the fulvic family because that's what they would do in an organic garden would be to break down organic material roots fish guts just whatever um, eventually break it down the problem is that this is already broke down this is this is protein and nitrogen and this is the food so I mean I could I could eat this the problem is is that it gets in between the rocks and slows down filtration which means I have to wrap more of the water around the beds and and less through the beds means less exposure to the ammonia giving us a slower breakdown of the water. Um,
of the ammonia in the water. Quick pepper update. I plucked those, plucked the big old pepper off of that last week and in, in hopes that it would grow and it has. It's grown more peppers, which is weird. Uh, why is it not, you know, three foot tall and then growing uh, peppers? I don't get it. Why? Look at the, the fruit. It's like a full grown plant producing full grown fruit, but it's a midget. I don't, I don't get it. Here, 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 and here. Okay. That's about it. I know it's t tremendously boring, but what can I say? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, there is a pepper over there inside that basil. Um, I don't know if you can see it's on the edge there. The basil is trying to bury it, but it's not going to have it. It has yet to produce a single piece of fruit, which is strange. <coughs> the watermelons that I thought were watermelons from my buddy obviously are not watermelons, as now they've healed. This looks like some sort of squash. That may or may not be a watermelon. He told me that he's sure that there were watermelons in that um, in that bucket. So um, I'm calling that a watermelon. <laughs> and there's one on the other side I planted over there I'm calling a watermelon. But this has recovered nicely. I'm calling it a squash. The one on the end right there, I know you can see that right there. I'm calling that a squash also. And there was one more, oh, the very large one, the one that had flowers on it, the one that was went through the most transplant shock, I'm calling that squash also. While I'm talking about transplant shock, I should probably go into mycorrhizal or mycotazol or however you want to pronounce it. It's a fungus. It works a symbiotic relationship with the roots. It helps the plants break down um, minerals in the ground and helps the plant uptake those minerals so that the plant might give off the sugars that the fungus requires. And the fungus wraps itself on the roots around the small filaments of the roots. It makes it look like it's got a beard. The roots look like they have a beard. And um, they're super small and they help the plant take up. So um, anytime you use a, anytime you want to transplant um, a shot or a dip of the, uh, the fungus mycorrhizal, M-Y-C-O-R-H-I-A something, 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 um, you want to do that. A couple products called Plant Success you could do. Ah, damn, I forgot the names. Boy, this is going to be a bad one. I'm sorry. Okay, there are a couple products, uh, microbial products, that you can buy and then hopefully culture and grow yourself if you need a lot of it. Uh, one is called um, Autumn Leaves, and it breaks this stuff down, liquefies it so that the plants can absorb it. Right now, it, the plants can't take that up. It would take a month of Sundays for this to break down eventually, and then the plants will be able to take it up. But this organic material, this, this um, bacteria, you can put in the water, and it will break this stuff down, liquefy it, and then the plants can take it, and the beds will begin to filter again. Um, so again, one is called liquid... Uh, shoot. One's called organic digester, and the other is called... Autumn leaves, because it's designed for koi tanks um, that have taken on autumn leaves outside. And then there's a bunch of organic material on the bottom of the pond that you can't get out, it's leaves. And the fish suffer, so they put this in there to help break it down. Okay, 834, little update on the plants. Again, these are tomato plants on this side. These are the larger plants. Um, beef steaks and uh, Cherokee purples and blacks and um, brandy wines. So they're a bigger producing fruit, okay? As opposed to the other side, which are all um, cherry tomatoes. There's a nice bandolier of tomatoes starting to come in now. You can start to see. It's a better angle this way. Nice bandolier. The bandoliers are cool. If you don't know what a bandolier is, uh, it's a string of stuff. Let's put it that way. But there's another one. And another. So at any rate, there's blooms everywhere all over this, as they're going to be, they're cherries. Um, I did not know they'd bloom like this, especially in the bandoliers. That's just too cool. Now uh, I've added this piece of string, and 9.36, I'm going to try not to go over. Um, the trace elements, or the salts, have worked tremendously well for the um, cucumber. The beans are coming along nicely. I wish they'd continue to grow. Okay, 9.54, that's it. I hope this is a good update. Oh, these uh, peas are done for. Uh, they were, uh, I got them in too late. 
uh, in the season. So the heat, they can't take the heat. Okay, see you guys. Thanks.